Angelica knew what love between characters in a novel is like, when the man who is the main character has a cold type of character, and the main female character acts as an ordinary girl who is loved by the same main character. And, of course, this union has a political character which was foreseen by their grandfathers, and maybe great-grandfathers, but no matter what happens, in the end, our heroes will live happily ever after. But our story begins with the fact that the main character begged her duke husband to end their conversation by agreeing to the terms of engagement. However, it is worth noting right away that the end of our story began simply with a real dream. The young man did not agree to our heroine's request, trying to clarify what else she wanted to ask him. Since the girl could not achieve positive results for herself from Dominic, she was simply in despair. At the same time, the words of the woman's appeal, who asked why she still considers herself a devil's dog, when she is a real angel, came to mind again. And then the girl mustered up her courage and finally asked the young man to save her uncle, prompting Dominic to ask if he hadn't heard what he just heard. Then the duke asked Angelica if this was all she could say to her husband, who had just returned from the war, and then asked our heroine if she was really asking to save the traitor. The girl understood what she was asking, but continued to insist that he do her this favor. Dominic with a claim tried to explain to Angelica no shame. The girl asked what had happened and explained that she had not said anything bad, at the same time noting that this war started because of the women of the family. Dominic concluded that our heroine could not answer his question for some reason, so he tried to find out what her behavior meant. Instructions from the woman who told her that she should act like an angel. Angelica did not stop remembering these words and, as if in oblivion, simply let herself run and ran until she found herself in her rooms. The girl heard this woman's voice again, which addressed her and told her why she was not listening to her, and continued to persuade our heroine to go back and do everything in her power, emphasizing that she should do it. But Angelica in response only spoke that she wanted nothing more and tried not to listen to this voice that continued to speak. And the woman did not stop repeating calling her their little angel and still tried to convince her that all this was only for her. And in the meantime, a maid came to Dominic's room and tried to explain that her lady was not well, although the young man himself asked the woman not to worry and said that he himself would go to her and arrange everything. Our heroine continued to suffer from these persuasions of the woman and thought that if she was reborn, she would have only one goal in life. Angelica did not want to live like that again, not for a day, not for a minute, and did the irreparable. Our heroine woke up from the screams of her assistant, who woke her up because she saw that her lady was covered in sweat. Michelle thought that Angelica was suffering from night terrors and that was the reason for her nervousness, and tried to find out if it was really a dream. The companion began to ask what kind of dream she had, which brought her to a state of trembling and fright, to which our heroine replied that she dreamed in a dream how she would be married to Dominic. Michelle reassured the girl with the words that it was all right and you should stop worrying, and then Angelica said that at the end of the dream she committed suicide. Our heroine asked her lady for honesty about whether she would be happy if she married the duke, and Michelle gave an immediate and affirmative answer. Michelle then reminded Angelica how all their friends also said this every day and still all claim it, but she still asks the same question. The girl asked our heroine why she was asking her about this when she was already on the way to connecting them with the Duke of Fate and clarified what her interlocutor was going to do. Angelica thought for a while in silence, and then Michelle interrupted her thoughts and said that in any case she would marry the duke, but at that moment she heard a negative response to our heroine in response, after which our heroine frankly stated that she is not going to get married and will not marry Dominic. Michelle suspected that her hostess was not at all going to spend time at tea, as she usually does, and directly asked Angelica what she planned to do today. Our heroine confirmed her companion's suspicions, and then added that they urgently needed to go home. As surprised Michelle also heard Angelica's request that she take care of it and warn the coachman. Soon they were already in stallion country, and Angelica admitted that being in the mansion at this time was somehow quite difficult, at the same time strange and even interesting. Angelica turned to Michelle and asked her to get used to this place as it would be a permanent setting for them now. Then Michelle asked our heroine if she was really going to write a letter to her fiancé to break off the engagement. And the girl replied that she was not just going to do it, but would do it immediately, and then asked Michelle how to properly submit her request. The girl thought about the fact that it might be worth writing something short, but then she imagined that it would look very dry. She didn't think that would go very well, and asked Angelica her opinion on whether a few words would be enough. Our heroine thought about Michelle's words and still decided that she just needed to clearly state her desire on this matter and that was it. The assistant decided to leave the young lady alone and offered to bring her a treat, and Angelica declared her wish that she would gladly eat the pudding. When our heroine was left alone with a pen and paper, she could not put words together in any logical sentence. Angelica's mental silence was interrupted by Michelle's offer to walk with her into the living room. Then the girl admitted to our heroine that the duke had come to visit her, which surprised our heroine. 
Angelica asked Michelle to take him to the guest room, and she herself declared that she was not going to change her mind and would stand her ground until the end, at the same time wondering what happened that someone who had never been interested in her before suddenly came to see each other. Our heroine came to the conclusion that an unpleasant conversation would take place much earlier than planned, but still she was not going to stop and, thinking that she did not know why Dominic came to her, went to meet him. Our heroine entered the guest room with the thought that she was not afraid of anything that would happen and that she would not speak. Dominic greeted Angelica with a friendly smile and a comment that he was glad she had come. The first thing that struck our heroine was his smile, which was always absent, and then the young man said that they had never met here, and Angelica confirmed it. Dominic emphasized that he understood that his fiancée was not coming to his estate today, to which the girl said that she needed to prepare something first, so she waited until the visit. The young man assumed that our heroine was cooking for him and said that he decided to get ahead of her and do it himself. Angelica asked him in surprise what he was saying, and also wondered how he knew what she was cooking. Among other things, she thought to herself, did the Duke decide to break off their engagement too? Dominic responded with a question, wondering why he shouldn't know what she was cooking, before admitting that he knew she was going to propose and get ready for the wedding. Our heroine was deeply confused by the Duke's words, which caused him to counter-question why she was reacting like that. And Angelica told Dominic that she did not know what he was talking about, and she herself could not believe that he was really saying such a thing. But for some reason the Duke was sure that our heroine was going to propose to him today and continue further preparations for the wedding. Angelica frankly said that it was not like that, and she herself watched his reaction and did not understand what was happening to him and why he was so disappointed now, and did he really expect something else. Dominic was just silent for a while, rather out of shock, while our heroine, meanwhile, thought that his happy expression at the beginning was due to the fact that he really thought they were going to get married. Only Angelica did not want to lose to him and therefore decided to put an end to their relationship. The girl called out to the Duke and said that she wanted to say that she was going to break off their engagement. Dominic still couldn't understand what he heard, let alone accept, so he just kept silent, and our heroine didn't understand why he didn't comment on her words. Finally the Duke spoke and simply said that he did not understand her actions and now our heroine was confused because she did not know how to bring this matter to an end. Angelica directly asked him not to pretend that he did not understand anything. She then asked her fiancé why he never takes it when she says serious things to him. The girl explained that even when she says something so transparently and clearly, he still replies that he does not understand anything. And Angelica admitted that she was uncomfortable in such moments, after which she asked directly if he ever took their relationship seriously. Dominic asked our heroine not to be so emotional, addressing the abbreviated manner of the name, and then the girl sharply pushed him away from her and did it so that he fell to the floor. Then our heroine said that he has no right to call her that. The Duke countered by asking why she thought he couldn't afford to do that and even more so didn't want to, then reminded Angelica that he was her fiancé after all. Our heroine looked at him and said she had no idea he was so focused on their engagement. And then she frankly admitted that she is not such a desirable party for him, and there is no particular sense in creating this union. Then Dominic reminded that this marriage was the desire of their ancestors and emphasized that he agreed even though it was just someone's whim, and then asked our heroine if she was going to violate their will. Angelica demanded that the Duke not use this reason as an excuse, then added that if he cared so much about his ancestors, then he should do something better. And then she suggested that Dominic wanted this union solely for the sake of the title, which she told him directly. The Duke immediately challenged our heroine that she didn't know him at all, and asked if she really thought he cared enough about his title to marry her. Angelica confirmed that she thought so and added that she was sure that he was now extremely disappointed that his plans were falling apart. And she herself remembered the past and remarked that it is quite simple to be next to a woman whom he does not love. Our heroine knew all the time that she was not loved and besides, she was always running after this man and his attention. Angelica told Dominic that he was never interested in her, then asked directly what she meant to him. The girl herself gave options for the answer, where she was simply the one who gave him a name and the one he was going to marry, and noted that he continued to ignore her every time. Our heroine frankly stated that she had no choice but to give up a marriage that was created without love. Dominic then spoke up and said he wasn't sure he had used the right words to explain, but his fiancé didn't even want to listen, throwing papers at him. She then said she didn't want to hear anything else, after which she suggested they just end their engagement. Now we know Angelica, who broke off her engagement and lived happily ever after. After talking with the Duke, our heroine was sitting in her office and thinking about whether she thought things would turn out this way in their breakup. And then Michelle said that not everything in life goes the way you want it to. The girl asked her mistress if Dominic correctly understood her words and intentions. Without even thinking, Angelica answered that, apparently, in this situation, only she understands what is happening and why. Then the assistant said that the main thing was that the matter was settled and emphasized that her lady was very brave and did an excellent job. Our heroine looked at Michelle and tiredly told her that she was glad to hear that. She herself got up and went to the window, where she watched Dominic standing in the yard and not going to leave, looking into her windows and meeting her eyes. 
The girl did not understand why the Duke behaved like that and began to conclude that she was talking to a wall, and Michelle said that she understood the situation very well since she had to live with her mistress. Then the assistant admitted that she did not think that the Duke would break off their engagement so easily. Michelle even admitted to Angelica that she thought Dominic liked her, but was cut short in her verbal outbursts. Our heroine looked at the girl and declared that she absolutely does not know how to joke. Angelica then asked Michelle to prepare her a bath of water so that she could cool down and relax a bit and the girl ran off to do her errands. When our heroine was left alone, she began to think about what was happening and how she wanted to break off the engagement, despite the fact that she loved him very much and even that being with Dominic was her dream. The girl remembered the period when her father died and how she cried near his coffin. She remembered how in those disconsolate moments she was called by a man who came up and hid her under an umbrella and said that if our little heroine continued to grieve like this, she would get very sick. When the girl asked him who he was, the man introduced himself as Fernando Carandil and asked to be called Duke, explaining that people usually call him that. He emphasized that they were seeing each other for the first time and emphasized that he was pleased to meet our little lady. Then this man admitted that he owed a lot to her father and expressed his deep sympathy for the Count's death. Fernando also turned to our heroine and said that no matter how strange it sounded, he wanted to introduce her to one person now. After that, he called little Dominic and introduced him to the Count's daughter and our part-time heroine. Of course, neither the atmosphere nor the circumstances were conducive to falling in love, but it happened. That's how they met, got to know each other and that's how their relationship started. Our heroine tried to spend time with her friend and happily ran to him at meetings and knew where to find him when he was hiding from everyone. One day, Angelica found Dominic and he said that he was reading a book, and when the girl asked what it was about, the boy simply replied that there was nothing interesting in it for her. Then our little heroine asked him not to speak like that and offered to spend time together. But he turned away and said that he was busy, and then asked to wait one minute. Dominic climbed into the bushes and wound something there, and then asked our little heroine to give him her hand, and saying that everything was ready. He put a fragile ring made of flowers on her finger, and Angelica liked this gift very much, after which she again and again asked to play with her. Our heroine admitted that she was really happy with him. The girl now thought about what her aunt would say about this news and how angry her uncle would be. She understood that even many people from high society would not miss the opportunity to wash her bones on this occasion. But what if even the servants were already condemning and laughing at her? Angelica decided that she couldn't think about the others, because if she continued at the same pace, things would end very badly for her, just like in her dream. Our heroine understood one thing, that she did not want to die in this way. The girl went to the fireplace where wood was burning and thought for a while and then she took off her engagement ring and threw it straight into the fire thinking she needed to live her life. Our heroine wanted to do everything in order not to live the life she lived in her dream. After some time, our heroine asked her assistant whether she managed to find out what she asked for, but the girl was afraid to speak and then Angelica told Michelle that in her apartment you can discuss any issues and not be overheard. Then the assistant timidly declared that our heroine was right about her uncle, whom she saw leading a bloody war. And then our heroine admitted that even one thought about it makes her feel disgusting. The girl thought about the dream where she and Dominic were not on good terms, but at the same time, what could be said about her uncle and why she saw him among those who organized the rebellion. Angelica concluded that first she needed to study the nature of her dream and all the circumstances of it well, so she turned to her assistant and asked her for one favor. The request was made in a whisper, so we don't know the gist of it, but Michelle informed the hostess that the Earl wasn't staying in Stallion Country and noted that the rumor was that he wouldn't be staying more than three days. Our heroine was very surprised and asked when such changes took place. The girl began to analyze the situation and understood that for some reason everything was not coming together, especially since she knew that the situation should not have changed so radically. Angelica knew her ambitious uncle who, having just received his title, would definitely stay in the capital for as long as possible, and once again wondered if her relative was really plotting a rebellion. Our heroine began to ask the assistants where he intends to go and did not receive anything clear in response, since Michelle did not know anything about it. The assistant said only that it would take several months to get to his destination and admitted that she had heard it from the butler. For our heroine, this was already a clue and she rushed to the maps of the area to try to understand his final destination. Based on the information received, one could lean towards the fact that he was heading to Lebanon, although this was not surprising. Because if you take into account her dream, this place was the first territory that her uncle began to control, and this state belonged to the imperial family Levadonia. Our heroine assumed that maybe it was just a coincidence, although later she returned to the opinion that everything was too specific for a simple coincidence. Angelica also thought that if her uncle was planning a rebellion, he would need a lot of money to organize everything. Then our heroine turned to Mitchell and asked to help her organize an audit of the accounting books. Butler, who was the butler, was called to the hostess and immediately said that there was no point in checking these papers and asked why she wanted to do it. About herself, Angelica decided that he was a real idiot and said in her voice that she needed to make a simple reconciliation. 
Then Butler, not understanding anything, answered that he understood the task and asked to wait, and our heroine at this moment asked readers to pay attention to how this young man ignores her. Soon the butler brought the accounting books and reported that these were statements for the past year. And he thought to himself whether the young lady would be able to understand something in these texts and consoled himself with the thought that she would not be able to do anything. Angelica thanked the butler and told him that she was in no rush, so he could go about his business while she quietly studied her accounting books. Butler then turned to the lady and said that it was desirable that she should look over them now and in his presence, as these records must be kept in a certain and safe place. Of course, Angelica did not show her displeasure, but herself thought about how he dared to tell her that she had the right to study the financial statements only in his presence. None of them gave up and tried to defend their position, while the butler showed his patience and endurance, and our heroine showed her persistence and interest. Angelica remembered how in her dream, before her wedding, her uncle said that their family was on the verge of bankruptcy, so he asked the bank to give him a loan. Our heroine found confirmation of these uncle's words in the accounting books, and she also saw that the income from the mines remained stable every season. Angelica asked Butler if there were any mines owned by her family. The young man replied that the Count had purchased one plant a few years ago, and then our heroine asked what kind of enterprise it was and asked to bring her documents confirming the purchase of this property. Butler then stated that it was solely the Earl's decision and added that she did not need to know about it. In response to this butler's statement, our heroine asked to give an honest answer to the question why her family borrowed money from the bank. Then Butler that this is due to the fact that the agricultural sector is experiencing a bad season, so it was necessary to close the debt. Our heroine immediately remembered that exactly the same excuse sounded in her dream. And Angelica asked the butler that if her family were to suffer losses, shouldn't all family members be informed? Butler then said again that this too was the Earl's decision and asked her to change if someone told her the truth. Our heroine replied that if she knew the true situation of the family, she would at least stop spending money on extravagances. Then the butler added that the Count did not want to worry her and cause inconvenience, and also emphasized that everything depends on the repayment of the debt. Angelica directly asked how they were going to repay the debts, and the young man replied that it could be done through the income from the agricultural sector. But our heroine knew that this was a real lie, because this money was spent to pay for soldiers trained for battle. The girl decided for herself that first she needed to take care of this debt and turned to the butler with the words that it was impossible to repay the debt in this way. So she asked to release all the servants, except for those who were absolutely necessary. The butler indignantly asked the young lady what all this meant and added that there were no servants who were superfluous in this estate. Our heroine then said that she was not going to organize any banquets and informed them that they would not have any guests in the near future, so she asked that only twenty servants be left and the rest be dismissed. The butler questioned whether it would make sense to dismiss all the servants because then she would have to do the household chores, while emphasizing that she was a noble lady first and foremost. And in response, Butler heard that our heroine can do household chores if the need arises. And then Angelica turned to the butler and said that he was the first person she decided to free. Of course, all the servants were upset after learning the latest news and did not fully understand what was happening. Our heroine heard how the maids discussed what was happening in the estate, as well as how they said that they had no idea what their mistress was thinking. And now we will meet a new hero, who immediately asked Angelica why there is so much commotion in this house. Regan was our heroine's brother and when she found out why he came back so early, the young man explained that he used the portal to see his sister. Regan tells Angelica that she sent him such a bombshell debt letter and he wants her to hug him first. The brother also immediately mentioned that our heroine decided to break off the engagement, and then the girl immediately confirmed that this was the truth in action. And then Regan asked Angelica what Dominic was doing in the guest room if their engagement was called off. Our heroine replied that she did not know and did not even want to go and look at him. The brother immediately asked the sister why she made such a decision in the first place, and the girl cried in response. Angelica then stated that she would share the reason with him, but only if he promised not to laugh at anything she said. Regan gave his word to his sister and added that she can tell him whatever she wants. Our heroine told her brother about her dream, and he asked her if she really thought that everything she saw in it was coming true now. Then Angelica sadly said that she knew that it would be difficult for him to believe her. But Regan said it made sense and added that he would never let that happen to her. Then our heroine remembered how she saw his blood and confessed to her brother that when he went hunting with Dominic, he would die there and she added that he did not even have time to shake her hand. Regan tried to reassure Angelica and said that there was absolutely no reason for him to go hunting with this guy and added that she should know that it was unlikely to happen. Angelica then despairingly remarked that she doubted it was just a dream and that's why she was now worried. Our heroine asked her brother not to go hunting at all for a certain time and emphasized that he should be especially careful on June 29th, to which the brother promised to be careful. After that, Regan clarified whether our heroine finally broke off the engagement with this Dominic and said that he fully supports her in this matter. Then the brother told his sister that he would make the duke leave the place and not disturb her. Our heroine doubted whether this would be normal and reminded him that he should be polite. Regan told his sister not to worry and to just wait for him and trust him. The brother turned to young Mr. Carondel and declared that his behavior was inappropriate. 
Then Dominic simply asked what happened to his bride. Regan reminded him that their engagement was off, to which the Duke replied that he had never agreed to that. Dominic asked our heroine's brother to sit next to him, because his neck hurts, and he, for his part, said that it was too late and, in his opinion, it was time for all the visitors to go home. Duke Carando replied to Regan that when he woke up tomorrow, he would see him sitting there again. Regan had to sit opposite Dominic, who kindly asked him how his young knightly life was going. The young man in reply asked if that was really what he wanted to talk about now, and heard back from the Duke that he had not asked him any questions, so he would simply explain that his purpose was to meet and talk with his sister. Dominic wanted to know the reason she broke off their engagement, so Regan deciphered his presence in their home. The Duke immediately questioned and our heroine's brother realized that his interlocutor was not even aware of the reasons that prompted his bride to take this step. Dominic immediately asked Regan about these reasons and, in general, what our heroine told him about this. Then the brother replied maliciously to the Duke that at last his sister had come to her senses and had taken the right step, and added that if she had married such a scoundrel as he, it would have been an excessive extravagance, for he had nothing but a pretty face and a noble name. Dominic asked Regan if he really went crazy and added that he can tolerate this once, because he is of the same blood as the woman with whom he will soon marry. Then the young knight declared that his sister was no longer the bride of Mr. Carindill. Dominic replied that in that case there was no point in him being patient and reached for the new moon. The Duke demanded that Regan stop playing with him because he was going to kill him anyway. Our heroine's brother then grabbed Dominic in return and demanded that he stay away from his sister until he personally killed him himself, and the Duke countered by asking Regan if he thought he wouldn't wait until then. At that moment, our heroine went downstairs and saw how these two were on the verge of a fight. The girl immediately turned to her brother and asked what he was doing, and then demanded that the two of them stop immediately. Then the duke approached Regan and offered him to go hunting together and settle the dispute there and asked how he felt about meeting for this on June 29. Dominic was waiting for an answer from Regan and pressed that the brother of our heroine is afraid of him. Angelica at this moment, on the contrary, insisted that her brother hurry up and stop this argument. But his sister's words did not affect him and he already answered, agreeing to meet on the hunt on the same fateful date that was in his sister's dream. The next moment, our heroine decided to act decisively and stood between them, and she herself asked her brother how old he was, that he was engaged in such matters, walking on a leash to the duke. When Angelica told him that she trusted him, the brother replied that he was four years younger than Dominic and remarked that he was better than him. Our heroine demanded that the young people immediately apologize to each other, and then Regan took the floor first and apologized to the duke, saying that he did not know what he was doing. Regan then turned to Dominic reminding him that they would see each other soon and heard confirmation. Young Carindel said he was looking forward to the upcoming meeting. At the same time, our heroine's brother thought about how he hated this person. Regan turned to his sister and said that he had little time and it was time to go, and our heroine, indignant at the behavior of the two men, asked her brother if he really made this mess and now he was just going to disappear and continued to be madly angry with him. But the brother kissed his sister and tried to calm her down. And Dominic, meanwhile, continued to sit in his seat, and then our heroine asked Regan to let her know if anything else bad happened. And when this idiot, referring to her ex-fiancé, would leave their house, and then said that she would wait for his message in any case. But the brother told his sister that now he had to leave urgently and hurriedly disappeared, leaving our heroine alone with Dominic. The young man immediately turned to our heroine, who replied that her brother must have been in too much of a hurry, solving some personal matter, and asked to forgive him for his rudeness. But Dominic was already interested in Angelica, what she meant when she called him the Little Duke. The young man also asked the girl why she was behaving like that with him, while our heroine was thinking about why he had such a strange expression on his face. Again the girl heard the request not to leave him, while she wondered if the Dominic she knew was saying these words to her, and then immediately stopped all thoughts, reminding herself and him that they had already finished their relationships. The Duke replied that he had never given his consent to it and asked our heroine why she so wanted to destroy everything that was and could be between them. He reiterated that they were engaged and emphasized that, among other things, they had a responsibility to fulfill the promise of generations past and said that this was a relationship that could not end so easily. Then our heroine nervously asked him why he didn't just give up on this promise and forget it. Angelica shouted that she had already decided everything for herself and asked not to stop her with her strange excuses. Dominic asked the girl to at least name the real reason why she does this and added that maybe this is a problem that can be solved. Then our heroine laughed and asked the duke why it was only now that he began to ask this question, and then told him to let her inform him of it himself. Angelica then turned to Dominic and asked him if he knew anything about her. The young man looked at her questioningly, and then the girl said that she had asked a simple question. Then Angelica asked him what color she likes the most and if she likes sunny days at all. After a few more minutes, our heroine asked Dominic if she preferred cloudy weather, but he sat thoughtfully and remained silent. Through tears, the girl again asked the question about what flowers she likes, and waited for an answer, but everything was in vain. 
Without waiting, Angelica again asked the person she loved very much what his hobby was, and then asked him to name his favorite dessert, and even later, summing up everything, asked if he knew any of this. Since the answer was only silence, our heroine already demanded at least some kind of answer, but there was none as before. Angelica then said that she did not expect to hear anything else, but at that moment Dominic mentioned the color black, which confused our heroine, because she did not expect it, and even more so did not know how he managed to give the right answer. The girl then said that the answer was wrong because she liked the color blue, to which Dominic replied that she said that because everyone thought it had something to do with her last name or the color of her eyes. And then he added that she likes neutral colors while touching her face. The young man continued to give answers and stated that, no matter how strange it is, our heroine loves rainy days, and this knowledge of his shocked the girl again. Dominic continued talking and this time he said that he didn't know what her favorite flower was, but he said that her body always smelled like calendula. Now our heroine was in deep confusion, because it turned out that he was really interested in her, although in her dream she had no idea about it. Angelica made a revelation to herself that she really understands that the man standing in front of her has really changed. At that moment, our heroine heard another line of Dominic about the fact that he knows what she likes the most and the girl asked him what he was talking about. Then the duke came up to her and grabbed her by the wrist, and Angelica was once again mentally puzzled by the question, was she in front of her the same man whom she knew and whom she had seen in a dream? Now the girl said enough of these scenes, but Dominic asked her to be smart and not push him away and asked why she was stopping him. The duke then informed her, his bride, that maybe she didn't know, but he was a bit preoccupied with real estate matters, after which he said that from now on he would give her more time, but Angelica replied that it was not the way to do it it's not worth it. Dominic asked our heroine if she was going to continue to behave in a similar way. Then Angelica told him that he did not want to understand the situation at all and called him the little duke again. Dominic demanded that he not be called that way again and reminded him that he was still waiting for an answer to his question. The duke asked directly what had happened to the stallion family, and if he was right, then. And before he could finish, Angelica stopped him and told him that this was not the time or topic to be discussing with outsiders. And then Dominic immediately asked the bride if he was a stranger to her. A little later, the duke was talking to an aide, who emphasized the fact that, one could conclude, things were not going well for them. And then, seeing the duke's reaction, said that, judging by everything, he emphasized something unnecessary and superfluous. Suddenly, Dominic turned to the assistant and asked him to answer a question about what he had recently learned about the stallion family, and the butler said that, as far as he knew, nothing special had happened recently. But the duke did not think so, because he had a different opinion about the situation here. In addition, Dominic himself saw the maids pack their things and leave the mansion. He noticed a commotion in the mansion and even some disorder, as well as the absence of a manager. Dominic wondered if the Count's family had really suffered so much. The Duke continued to think that he should know all this, and at that moment he was distracted by an assistant who made a remark. The young man said that a little earlier the Duke had told him to go to the office and that was why he was busy. Dominic asked the assistant to give him the entire next week off from whatever business was on his agenda. The assistant immediately asked the gentleman if he had any urgent business. Then the Duke said that he should go to Stallion Country, and his assistant was even embarrassed, because he did not understand what exactly he was talking about and why he should go there. Dominic said that he needed to meet with the Stallion family next week and immediately emphasized that there would be a lot of unpleasant people there and he needed to support them. But in spite of everything, the duke still wanted to check something for himself, and the assistant, meanwhile, inquired whether it was Hendel he meant when he spoke of unpleasant people. But Dominic again asked to know if nothing had happened in the earl's family and since his bride had decided to break off their relationship and what had caused her such a desire. Then the assistant asked his master not to worry so much and called him the little duke. The young man also expressed his opinion of our heroine's conduct, and admitted that she must be angry at not being able to see him as often as she would have liked, and asked his master's opinion of his conclusions. Dominic plaintively asked the young man if he knew Angelica better than he did. The assistant hesitated a bit and did not dare to answer, but then he spoke anyway. He stunned the duke by asking, wasn't it obvious what women were thinking and then Dominic said he had thought about leaving him to worry about that moment. But then he said that he came to the conclusion that the wrong person was next to him, and the assistant could only apologize for his words, and it was useless. And in the morning, our heroine heard a familiar voice that asked her how she liked this house, to which Angelica wondered in her mind, what was the reason for this woman's arrival? This time, our heroine was visited by the only daughter of her uncle, whose name was Pamela Stallion. It can be said about her that at first this relative lived in Stallion country, but then it turned out that she somehow owed an undisclosed amount of money to the Countess of the Capital, supposedly for education. But of course it was a lie, because it was known that Pamela was engaged in swimming and entertainment and definitely did not acquire knowledge anywhere. Meanwhile, a relative immediately noticed the dust and smell in the mansion and urgently told our heroine about it. Pamela directly asked Angelica why the house was such a mess, but our heroine did not consider it a mess, so she was in no hurry to answer. Although she was in no hurry to explain anything to this person. Angelica knew the state of the stallion family's castle, so she didn't pay much attention to her words, finding them funny, to say the least. 
Then another question was asked, and of course it related to her relationship with her ex-fiancé, and the most interesting thing is that the source of information was the servants. But our heroine did not hide anything and simply answered directly that her engagement was broken. At first, Pamela assumed that our heroine had gone mad, and then Angelica replied that Dominic refused because of a family pact. The guest clarified about this warning and asked if it was not about the promise of the ancestors. According to the agreement, it was Dominic Carondale, being the second son of his father, who had to marry the eldest daughter of the Stallion family to continue the family. Already their eldest son was to become the successor of the Duchy of Carondale. Pamela tried to clarify to Angelica that if it was about the eldest daughter of the Stallion family, then perhaps it was not worth getting attached to who the eldest daughter should be. A relative of our heroine thought about something of her own, and then directly asked if she could propose to Dominic Carondale. Our heroine was shocked by what she heard and even questioned whether she had heard the words of her relative correctly, and Pamela continued to explain that if Dominic Carondale said that he would still marry the eldest daughter of the Stallion family, then she was quite ready to offer herself to him as a suitable candidate. And be that as it may, Angelica thought that Pamela was right this time, and she didn't have to be the one to marry a member of the Carondale family, and even wondered why she hadn't come to it her self-decision, but for some reason her heart felt a great heaviness at that moment. Then Angelica reminded Pamela that she was going to marry the crown prince, and after a moment of confusion, the relative decided on an answer. As an explanatory excuse, it was said that Dominic Carondel has a much more beautiful appearance than the crown prince. Pamela added that the duke's privileges are having more money and being tall. And after these words, the relative turned to our heroine and said that an important argument is also the fact that no one knows when and how the crown prince will die. Angelica immediately asked Pamela what she was talking about, and the girl asked in response how many living princes she knew in the imperial palace. The girl then told our heroine that the real prince was not even more than legitimately born and emphasized that he was only able to ascend the throne after killing all his brothers. Angelica asked Pamela to watch what she said because she could be punished. Then the relative replied that there were only two of them now and therefore she did not see any reason for concern, and then added that her father was of exactly the same opinion and even spoke about it directly. Pamela quoted the father as saying that the genealogy of the imperial family has long been broken and polluted. When Angelica heard about it, she asked her relatives if her uncle was really talking about it, and the girl firmly confirmed it, adding that she herself had heard him talk about it when they were at the farm. Our heroine was shocked by how he would say something like that at all, and even in a public place, and thought that if he had stayed in the capital, he should have been arrested long ago and ordered to insult the imperial family. Angelica asked Pamela not to mention the imperial family again, but the girl emphasized again that there were only two of them, so there was nothing to worry about. Pamela somehow concluded from her relative's reaction that our heroine had decided to get close to the crown prince, but Angelica decided to reply that she didn't care what they all thought about her, and once again asked her relative to watch her tongue now and in the future. When the girl gave her word to our heroine, she immediately decided to return to more urgent problems and again asked Angelica what she thought about confessing to the little duke. Then our heroine reluctantly agreed, and Pamela took the opportunity to say that she would not be able to take it back later, and clarified whether she confirmed her agreement that she could indeed confess to the Carondale family representative. Angelica replied that nothing else mattered and expressed her desire that it would be nice to play their wedding as soon as possible, as she was considering selling her assets after the event. When Pamela heard about this, she began to ask our heroine why she did this, and then Angelica offered to find out the answer from her father, asking him why he took loan money from the bank. The girl immediately began to question how it was possible that her father took money from the bank, and then our heroine showed documents that indicate that this financial transaction took place last month. Angelica also said that the area that belonged to their family was not in a state of famine, and she herself thought that her suspicions that the butler had lied to her were confirmed, and once again she came to the conclusion that she could not trust anyone. Angelica turned to Pamela and said that she did not even know whether her dowry would last until next month, and the girl finally fell into a state of shock, because she definitely did not expect this. Our heroine informed her relative that she had put her mansion up for sale and explained that starting tomorrow people would come and inspect it. At the same time, she remembered that this is the same place where she was born and grew up, and then she remembered how she got this house after her father received permission to participate in the competition. The mansion was purchased at the time for 12 million kroner, and the man said that it was excessive, but still offered to say so, because everyone would want to get it. Our heroine understood that this house was invaluable, but she was in a hopeless situation. Angelica thought that it would be nice if this mansion was sold before her aunt found out about it. Pamela immediately did not believe the words of our heroine and assumed that, most likely, she was joking. But judging by Angelica's reaction, Pamela came to the conclusion that her words were far from joking and now she was afraid that this whole situation would affect her proposal, after which she decided that she could not delay and she should immediately submit Dominic's marriage proposal. Our heroine stayed with her assistant and declared that she is not going to take responsibility for her uncle's debts, but at the same time, she is the only one who can stop this tragedy. 
Angelica turned to Michelle and asked to do her a favor, and Pamela really wasted no time, immediately going to the Duke and making him an offer of her hand and heart, which greatly puzzled the young man, and he even questioned her about what she had just said, but the girl was not confused and repeated her words again. Pamela even offered to seal their marriage now and play the wedding next year. Dominic called it all absurd and laughed, then said it didn't make sense. Then Pamela reminded that she was one of the eldest daughters of the Stallion family, which meant that he would also fulfill the request of the ancestors by marrying her. Dominic, for his part, offered the girl to imagine that this conversation never happened, and emphasized that it was impossible to even listen to it and asked to leave him. But Pamela wasn't going to give up and asked why he didn't want this union, especially considering that he didn't like Angelica anyway. And then the girl also added that our hero openly declared that he was not interested in this marriage, and in addition, he himself emphasized that he is not the type of man who marries a woman if he does not like her. Pamela defiantly admits that she says this because she sees how worried he is about the public attention, to which Dominic states that our heroine has been indifferent to him all this time, and then the girl asks him if maybe he was indifferent to her. In the end, Dominic was indignant at how low Pamela is selling herself now, and emphasized that this whole situation is at least unpleasant, and his interlocutor asked in response if this does not mean that he still loves our heroine. The young man frankly admitted that he really loves Angelica, and then added that he loves more than anyone. Our heroine was driving to an unfamiliar area for her and thought about the fact that she had never really been in this place outside of a dream. At the same time, everything around was exactly as it was in her dream, and the girl remembered fragment by fragment, trying not to miss anything. Now she was worried if the child she had seen would be okay, and then Michelle reassured her by saying that they would soon find out for themselves, as there was not much left to go. Angelica decided that she needed to meet and talk with this person first. Our heroine was scheduled to meet Dr. Dante, who was initially considered a bad specialist who had no business. Angelica found out that he was engaged in the maintenance of the sewer system to feed himself. Although it should be noted that there is no lower class than commoners, yet this person was an outcast, it should only be explained that he was also a person who possessed a rare talent that others did not have. Our heroine came to this person and was now knocking on his door, trying to understand if there was someone inside the building and if she was just going to this place. After some time, the man opened the door and asked the girl who she was and what she needed. Angelica responded by asking him if he was Dante, and the young man asked how she knew who he was. It should now be noted that our heroine knew him from the very beginning as a person who had a very good character, which deteriorated over time. Still, Dante was a genius and Angelica clearly remembered it from her dream. Although at first he was illiterate and did everything to enter the academy and get an education, and eventually it came to the point where he learned to memorize entire books. This person later graduated from the academy in one year, while others needed seven years to complete the same education. On the other hand, it explained why he worked so hard all his life, because born into the family of a poor shopkeeper, he grew up in constant oppression and was exposed to contempt all the time. Our heroine thought that maybe it was a kind of jealousy, but in any case he was and is a genius, after which the girl introduced herself, saying her name. Angelica bluntly told him that she had heard that he knew a lot about mushrooms and this somewhat puzzled the young man. Dante tried to quickly say goodbye to our heroine and declared that those mushrooms that have a hallucinogenic effect do not exist and asked her to go away. The girl explained that she was not asking him to poison her and said that she needed help of a different kind. Dante stated that all people speak the same thing and then ask for more and more magic mushrooms. Then our heroine declared that she was not interested in poison and explained that she needed information about herbs that have an antidote effect. The girl also said that she wasn't interested in hallucinogenic mushrooms, she needed medicine to save people, and explained that she didn't know anything about detox herbs or anything related to healing. Since Dante refused help, our heroine had to remind him that his father was also once addicted to mushrooms. The young man admitted that his father died 15 days ago and he did not know the cause of his death. This news greatly surprised and even puzzled our heroine, and then she heard from Dante that the consumption of hallucinogenic mushrooms has really increased recently. At the same time, the young man replied that he did not know for sure what the cause of his father's death was, and then rhetorically asked how he would know this, stressing that he was not even a doctor. Angelica asked him if it was ineffective to take herbs that have an antidote effect. Dante responded by asking if such detoxifying herbs even existed. And now the girl finally understood that the time had not yet come when he made a breakthrough in science and discovered these herbs with an antidote effect. She mentioned that he would be working with a herb called Sama in the future and told him about it, and also told him that it was rumored that this plant only grows in warm places and its roots should be used. Angelica began to search for answers to the question that the fact that the doctor did not even begin to study the matter would make her wait three years for the seed she needed. Then our heroine explained to Dante that there is a person whom she considers her father, and it seems to her that he is also addicted to these amazing mushrooms. The young man immediately inquired about his symptoms and the girl noted that he had suddenly collapsed and yellow foam began to come out of his mouth. Angelica also added that after two days he was still unable to regain consciousness and his limbs were paralyzed. 
Dante stated that these were the same symptoms that his father had and added that he was like a living corpse. Our heroine apologized for bringing up a sensitive topic, but at the same time understood that this was the only solution, and therefore told him directly that they should find the Samac as soon as possible to save the Duke's life. The girl wondered what would happen if Dante went to the academy right away, and even thought that they could buy more time to save the man's life. Angelica asked her interlocutor if he wanted to know what disease his father died of. Dante said that of course he wanted to know about it and added that he called the doctor several times, but no one could help him. Then our heroine said that it must be so, because most doctors do not even know about the existence of magic mushrooms, because they are popular only among a small number of aristocrats and even among debauched commoners. Angelica suggested that Dante study the matter, while promising him that she would sponsor his studies and work. Our heroine declared that she had enough money to help. The girl admitted that instead of buying jewelry and living in luxury, it would be better to invest her savings in the future. And now Dante began to think about whether he would be able to study and learn. Everyone knew that not every willing person could enter this academy, and ordinary people who entered had to pay large sums of money that not everyone could afford, which ultimately led to most people dropping out. On the other hand, for Dante it was the only possibility, and he understood it perfectly. Therefore, after thinking a little and weighing everything, Dante told our heroine that he could do it. Angelica exclaimed joyfully that this was a good answer, and promised to send him the necessary books as soon as possible, and as she went, she heard incessant words of thanks from her interlocutor. Our heroine understood that at the moment, this is all she can do. When Angelica returned, she noticed the duke and immediately asked him if he had been here all the time she was gone. Then the girl asked what he was doing, noticing that he was going through piles of paper. Dominic immediately replied that he was waiting for her, and when the girl asked why he didn't go to work and what about the knights, the young man replied that he had enough of that. Then our heroine reminded him that he remains the commander of the knights. While the girl was trying to understand what was happening here, and in particular what was happening to him, Dominic simply offered to marry him. He commented that his statement sounded pathetic, but that didn't stop him. Dominic shared his plans with our heroine and admitted that he was going to get serious about the company's affairs, and also explained that he was too busy to pay attention even to the Imperial Knights. The young man said that when he marries our heroine, he will not be able to appear at all for a while, because he will be especially busy. Then our heroine said that she was not going to repeat her words again, but she thought about why he was here and why he was doing all this. Angelica then said that she was very tired and asked to leave her. Dominic then touched her hair and said he knew she had to be busy and asked her to do whatever she wanted before adding that he didn't care who she was dating but then said he was just asking not to let it happen catch her and take possession of her. When our heroine tried to find out from her interlocutor what he meant, another person entered the room, who addressed Dominic with words of greeting, and then with an emphasis on the fact that he thought that he would only see him on the day of his own funeral. The man continued to speak and now asked Dominic what he had done on the occasion of their meeting. Then the man repeated the question and clarified directly that he had done such a thing to their Angelica. Our heroine was somewhat stunned, at least for the beginning, and in the middle of the case she immediately noticed that this young man was somehow too aggressive towards Dominic. Meanwhile, he turned to the girl, calling her dear, and asked that our heroine give them time to be alone. Dominic stated that he was tired and offered to meet tomorrow. But the visitor had other plans and he stopped the duke and immediately asked about the letter he had sent. And our heroine, meanwhile, watched as the older brother humiliated Dominic. Then the newly arrived duke turned to Angelica and asked if she had changed her mind about her and Dominic's engagement, but the girl's silence only confirmed her intentions. The man said to our heroine that in the end it was her decision, but at the same time emphasized that there is nothing good in someone waiting for his death. He asked Angelica if there were any reasons for putting this mansion up for sale and the girl gave an affirmative answer. And then the man said that it was time for them to move on to the main topic of conversation. The very next minute, our heroine was stunned by the news that he is buying this mansion and doing it for 12 million crowns. The man looked at the alarmed girl and then said that all the money was given in cash. But our heroine admitted that she is unable to calculate this wealth. The senior duke then stated that he was not just giving it to her, he was selling this mansion, but he had one condition. At the questioning expression on the girl's face, he asked our heroine to become his daughter and there was silence, because this request completely stunned Angelica, adding a unique state of shock. 